Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark, this is MacGyver's Garage. And today I want to talk a little bit more about the Supra. Uh, some interesting new news that's out there uh, regarding a recall. So, you know, Toyota has made most people aware of the recall that's out there. And some people have gone and gotten it done. Others are debating whether they want to or they're going to. I will tell you that I have had it done on mine. And uh, so that's what we're going to get into today. But first, I want to talk about last weekend. So last weekend, I took the camera. I took everything out to a car show. Uh, first car show I've actually taken the Super 2. I've been to meets. I've been to cruises. I've done other things with it, uh, track days. But I have never done a, an actual car show. You know, registered, paid the the entry fee, and and put the car out there. So the car is a little bit dusty, actually. It's a lot dusty right now. It's covered in a nice layer of dust, both inside and outside. And today I'm going to be cleaning that up. Uh, but first, what I wanted to do was was just kind of tell you about the the car show. So several hundred cars there. Uh, it was the 38th annual road celebration up in Guthrie, Oklahoma. A lot of really really cool older cars. Uh, the, just the quality of the builds of these older cars was so, so impressive. Uh, but So I brought mine out there, set it up, had some other friends with their cars out there, and uh, amazingly enough, I walked away with first place in the imports category, 1986 to present. So pretty wide category. Had a couple of, uh, I, I think second place was a, a really nice Porsche Turbo, um, but we walked away with the, uh, with the hardware. So kind of cool little uh, custom trophy that they did up for me so awesome so let's talk about the recall there's one of my neighbors right now actually he's got that 69 Chevelle SS surprisingly enough I met him at this car show uh, the car show that I was at with this funny that he's driving by right now awesome car uh, beautiful beautiful 69 Chevelle SS but I met him out there. He said he sees me out here all the time, loves the fact that I actually work on my own car, uh, and actually invited me over to his house. He has uh, 15 foot, I think he said 15 foot ceilings in his garage. He's got four post lift in there and said, hey, anytime I need a lift, it's open. Just come, come and knock. So uh, cool to have another car guy here in the neighborhood that has uh, the facilities in his, in his garage that that would make a lot of the stuff I've done already a whole lot easier. Could have used that a while ago, but hey, uh, that's that's awesome. Also, a friend of mine, Matt, just started up his, his new shop, Speed House, here in Edmond, Oklahoma. Uh, awesome shop, especially for anybody that's got BMW or any other European, mainly BMW, but uh, they do specialize in European cars. Sweet, sweet shop. Uh, I think he's got I want to say it was four or five bays, a couple of lifts in there, uh, just a really nice setup. He's got it already set up for a, a dyno to be put in at some point, so uh, looking forward to all that. All right, let's get into the recall stuff. Okay, so the recall came out, and I've heard actually quite a few people on forums and on Facebook saying that they're, they're just not going to get it done. And I get that for certain people. So if you have had a, a tune done, an Ecutech tune or boot mod, uh, anything that you've actually unlocked your your DME and you've gone in and uh, or your ECU and you you've actually done a true mod or a true tune to the car the problem that we're seeing is that because this is an ECU flash any tune that you got is gone now the dealership even when I took mine in uh, you know, I've got a pretty good rapport with the guys there at my dealership. Uh, I know quite a few of them. I go out on cruises with them, and, and they've got really cool cars. One of them has like a, an 1800 horsepower Supra, uh, fastest import car in Oklahoma, I believe. But he had uh, they they came out and they asked me, "Hey, have you tuned your car?" Uh, I was like, "Well, I've got a piggyback on it," which they know. They know me. They know what I've got. Uh, I haven't tried to hide anything from them. I take it off before it goes in just so that it simplifies the process. I don't actually take it completely off, I just disconnect it. Put it back to map zero, disconnect it, but yeah, they know what I've got on there. I'm not trying to hide anything from them. Um, but they came out and asked me if I had a tune because the flash will wipe anything that's on there. Uh, I guess they don't, they don't quite realize that at this point certain models don't or certain dates. Uh, aren't tunable. 
like mine. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so they knew about it, and, and that's why some people aren't going to go and get the get the recall done. Now there is a, a downside to not getting it done. Uh, well, there may be two downsides. So supposedly it had something to do with if you press the button multiple times uh, with the brake on, you could cause some damage with the brakes because it gets it into a weird cycle. I don't know. I don't know what the what the deal is. All I know is there was a recall done. It didn't just come from Toyota. It wasn't just a, a recall from Toyota, but it was the uh, National Highway Safety Board, I believe, that actually put it out because of accidents that had occurred from it. So that's where it, it came from. And it's not just Toyotas. It's not just the Supra. It is BMW wide. Uh, so the recall's out there. I went and had it done. No ill effects other than it kind of wipes your your ECU, it starts over. Um, and so anything you've done with like Bimmer code is gone. Uh, so that's what we're gonna talk about today is how to reset stuff and what I use, how I do the Bimmer code stuff. Oh, but let me go back. Let me go back real quick. Got off off track. I get excited. I get excited and I go down, down paths. Uh, <laughs> but those that are, are deciding not to do it could have a problem depending on what state you're in and how things are tracked uh, because this was a safety recall and not just a Toyota recall or a BMW recall this one could go towards your registration and you may not be allowed to register your car or re-register your car if you have not done the recall uh, so keep that in mind so if you go to re register your car and they say hey sorry you haven't had this recall done you're gonna have to go get it uh, and I feel bad for anybody who has a flash now if you were one of the oh, man if you're one of the people that jumped on the RK tunes or one of the other ones that they're shipping it overseas uh, you jumped on it right away you hadn't had the recall done sent it off you spent 1800 bucks to get this kind of one-off off the shelf tune get it in go in for the recall or go in for an oil change they do the recall you're out of luck you just lost what you sent it over there to do it's flashed back to stock and you're back where you began and out 1800 bucks kind of sucks all right so we're going to talk about it this is what i use uh this is the obd link mx plus there are some other ones out there this one happens to be uh from everything i've read the best one for doing the bimmer code uh so bimmer code is an app that you get on your phone you download it uh, it's free to download, but then in order to actually use it, you have to pay something like 30 bucks, 30, 40 bucks. I don't, I don't recall exactly what it was, but you pay it. And then that gives you the ability to go in through the OBD. This is Bluetooth. So you connect it through your phone and you go in and you can make all the changes that you, you need things such as it starting up in sport mode, uh, the mirror tilt instead of going 100% only goes to 30% or whatever you decide to set it at so that it doesn't tilt down where it's virtually useless when you're in reverse. You can set, uh, you can turn off all the, the warnings. So all those warnings that you get, those warning screens, you can turn them all off. You can uh, turn off the seatbelt chime. You can do all kinds of things. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is just kind of show you the, the general how it works, how you get into the menus, and then I'm gonna point you guys towards the uh, the manual that I've used that breaks down what the different things that you can go in and tune are. Uh, it, now it's a it's a very you know brush stroke. It's not a deep dive, uh, but it tells you how to do each one of them, and that's on the Mark V Super Forums or Super Mark V Forum. Uh, there is a, a thread. It's lots of pages long, but there's a manual in there that actually walks you through step by step how to tune out things that you don't want uh, like setting the speedometer the speedometer from the factory reads one mile an hour over I guess it's some German safety thing but you can go in and set it so that it reads exactly what it should be uh, you can go in into the custom or expert mode and set sport plus which gives you just a, a little bit more refinement on uh, engine and transmission just a little bit sportier shifting things like that so those are all things you can do so let's take a look at how we do this but first, how about a uh, warm start? Okay, so your OBD port is right down here. And right now I've got the JB4 plugged in there. 
So I can come up here and the JB4 usually has a little lock on it that takes a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver to get off. But I actually broke it off on purpose so that this wasn't such a pain in the butt. Then you've got your uh, OBD Link MX Plus and you just kind of come down here, line it up, install it. Now I'm going to go into uh, diagnostic mode. Okay, so I've got it plugged in. I'm in diagnostic mode. Now I'm going to open up my Bluetooth and go to my OBD link, go to connect. It shows that it's connected. Now I can actually open up the OBD link app and hit connect and it should. There it goes. It's going through its connection. Now OBD link itself, you can go in and uh, you can do a lot of like watching things, clearing codes. It's, it's useful on its own. If you don't have something like a JB4 that you're using, you can actually use this to go in and check codes, clear codes, and really take care of the car that way. Uh, so I've got an update available. I don't really need it right now. I'm just gonna say, okay, uh, dismiss it for right now. Okay, so I'm still connected. I had to, I ended up having to move the car. I was in my wife's way, she was leaving. Uh, still connected, it still says disconnect there. So we're gonna go back in, Bimmer code. Uh, there's an update available. We're not gonna do that right now. We'll do that later. Go to connect. And then it'll take a minute for it to actually go through the process of connecting. Okay, so once you are into Bimmer code, you're gonna have a selection of vehicles that you can choose from here, as you can see. Uh, don't choose Toyota Supra, choose BMW Z4. And the reason is, you get a whole lot more functionality, a whole lot more menus that you can get into if you use the BMW Z4. For whatever reason, all the stuff is there, but on the Supra, if you select Supra, you don't get access to it. Uh, so now it's gonna take a little bit of time to actually get in there. Um, and then once it does, we'll come back and I'll show you guys what's there. All right, so now that we're in, here are the menus that you've got that you can choose from. So you've got active sound design, uh, advanced crash safety module, air conditioning, body domain controller, ECU, head unit, instrument cluster, uh, roof function center, which it doesn't have because this isn't a convertible, and then seat module driver. Uh, so what we're gonna do is one of the ones that I suggest people do, a lot of people complain about the sound of the stereo that the, it just doesn't sound good. And one of those reasons is there's competing uh, interests with the stereo. So the subs in the back do put out an active sound for the, for the engine, like an artificial engine noise, makes it kind of sound Ferrari-ish, almost exotic-ish. Um, so what we're gonna do is come in here and then it gives you this. So you click on this and go to deactivate like I've got it here. So you could either turn it on or turn it off. Um, ours is deactivated. And then what you do is right here, you can see it's grayed out, but it says code. You'd hit code and it would code it. It would take a little bit of time. It would cycle through. So uh, if we go to like body domain controller, open that up and you're gonna see a whole list of, of different things that we can get into. Now it does take a little bit of time. Each time you go into one of the menus, it takes, a fair amount of time for it to read it and populate it. Same with coding it, takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it because you get to code it and code out the things that you don't want and have the things there that you do. Okay, so it's just finishing up and it should populate here in just a second. And there we go. So we've got like ambient lighting, uh, colors. I don't think that those are there. Brake force, uh, horn signal, time until automatic lock for the doors. So you can you can set it or turn it off right now. Mine set it two minutes. So if, uh, if you unlock it, don't actually open anything up. In two minutes, it locks itself. So right here is one of the big ones that a lot of people use. Driving, uh, the default driving mode. Mine's in sport individual. So whatever I set it up for in individual, that's what it comes up as. Um, you know, you can set how sensitive your rain light sensors are, the um, fog lights, mirror tilt so this is a, another one uh automatic mirror tilt you have it active so when you put it in reverse that mirror the passenger side mirror tilts down pretty far almost unusable so i've set mine to 30 percent. you can see right here 30 percent. so what you do is you just come in here 
you've got a listing of different selections. Uh, let's say I wanted it at 40%, not 30%. Now I can just select that. Uh, and then when you come back here, code would be blue instead of gray. You hit code, it goes through the whole process. Um, what else do we have in here? A whole bunch of bunch of pieces, uh, seat stuff, folding mirrors. But if you get into the expert mode, that's where you can you can go to uh, sport mode. It's going to give you a warning. Make sure that you know what you're doing when you go in here. And I I do suggest you have either got the the manual up so that you know exactly what you're going into, what you're changing. Uh, it's all in German, so that's that's a uh, as you can see here, it's kind of coded in um, German. So you find what you're what you're looking for. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different settings in here that you can go for, but you find what you're looking for, you go into it, you make changes, and then uh, you're given the option to code it or not code it. And so make sure that you know what you're doing. Head unit, uh, you can go in and, and change a lot of stuff there. Instrument cluster, you can make sure that it displays the things that you've changed. Uh, so very, very useful tool for customizing everything inside. Uh, you know, getting rid of all those warnings so when you hit traction control off you don't get a warning when you go to sport it doesn't pop everything up uh, you can still get to all those menus if you want to but you don't need to see them every time the the startup warnings all that stuff i've got them all coded off down in the description i will put a link to where you can find the manual uh, so that you can go through and do all of this yourself so what you'll need is some sort of device to hook up and bimmer code uh, like I said, it's free to download, but then once you get into it, after you get through the demo version, you do need to pay. So if you're going to actually code anything out, you do need to pay for it. And I, I think it's between $30 and $40. Um, the MX Plus, I believe, was right around $100. So you're looking at about $140, $150, depending on where you get the pieces, um, in order to be able to code these things out. But I think they're extremely useful, especially, uh, you know, they, there's annoying little things, but... For me, getting rid of that active sound made a huge difference in the stereo. Uh, once you dial in the, the equalizer, and if you do the Tata uh, mod where you actually port the box back here, um, man, the sound gets so much better. So, all right, guys, hope this was useful. Hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, if you have any suggestions, anything that you'd like to see on this channel, any, any pieces you'd like to see added, any... Uh, tips or tricks that you're interested in, go ahead and, and let me know so that I can get those uh, lined up and on the site for you. All right, guys, appreciate you checking this out. If you haven't done so before, go down and hit that subscribe button. Right next to it, there'll be a little bell icon. If you hit that, you'll get notifications every time I upload a video. Uh, you know, it costs you absolutely nothing to do it. It helps us out tremendously. And, you know, this community has been awesome. The, the comments, the feedback that I get, uh, you know, there's occasionally a, a negative one here or there, but overall, uh, the support has been awesome, and I, I truly appreciate everyone that's been checking this out and following along. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.